welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. Today I am going to attempt to film something mammoth. Um, it's going to be part one, anyway, of a goodness knows how many part series entitled What I Have Been Sewing During the Past 12 Months, or something along those lines anyway. You'll be able to see in the description what I ended up calling it. This suitcase here is packed full of absolutely every single garment that I have made in the last 12 months. Um, so the lockdown diaries. <laughs> <laughs> as you probably know I didn't really feel much like filming um, during the last 12 months I did my BTHQ banter videos but my personal videos and what I've been sewing and things like that I just wasn't feeling it but I was still sewing and I did actually get an awful lot made at times it felt like I wasn't sewing at all like I haven't actually done very much at all this year yet so far I've had one day of sewing uh, but I did achieve an awful amount when I actually went through my wardrobe and pulled out all of the garments that I had created over the past year I was surprised how many there were I'll put a picture up right now which will show you all of the garments laid out on my bed and um, bearing in mind that they are all piled up there is quite a few layers there so the first thing that I need to do before I can even start showing you what's in here is sort it out because I think I need to break it down into chunks. I'm not just going to work from when I started to when I finished because actually I can't even remember when I made half this stuff if I'm honest but what I can do is put it into categories so like I know I've got lots of dresses, I know I've got lots of tops and loungewear, I know I've got quite a few patterns by Tilly and the buttons so I'm going to try and break it down. So first things first, let's see firstly how many garments there are in here and secondly how many categories I can break it into for you. I think there's only one way to do this, and that's on the floor. is it let me think so that's on average two and a bit garments a month and um, that's not forgetting the serious amount of face masks that I've made throughout lockdown um, and obviously quite a little bit of bits and bobs sewing as well so 26 garments is not bad now let's break it down I've got a tilly pile I've got a loungewear pile I've got things that appear in both Loungewear. Loungewear. It's 27 garments. There's another one next door that I haven't brought in. Okay, so I've broken it down into a tilly, a loungewear, a summer, which is really tiny, um, but summer nevertheless, and a dresses. But the dresses is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven garments and I'm wondering if I might do that in two and the tilly one is one two three four five six seven garments as well let's see how I go <laughs> I'm going to start with the loungewear category I'm going to tack that onto the end of this video and then I'm going to film the other ones Okay, so garment number one, this is going to look like I haven't really changed at all, but I have. This is the Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt, which she has just released. Um, I have actually made a couple of adaptations to it. Um, I have changed the neckband ever so slightly, just made it a little bit narrower. Um, and instead of using the cuff pattern, I have actually just used ready-bought cuffs. Now, for the fabric... I love this fabric. This is actually from my shop and is available to buy via my website. It is a really unusual one. I'm gonna have to come in close to show you how fuzzy and cool it is. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Yes, you are. Look at that. 
it is really fluffy when you sew with it when you cut it out you will get little bits all over your sewing room but once it's sewn together it's absolutely perfect it's super soft as you brush it down it's really smooth and shiny but then obviously it's got this kind of fuzzy twinkle to it a little bit like um eyelash yarn if you're a knitter so it's lots of fun it's a bit luxurious i went for the puff shoulders um although this fabric is quite thin and drapey so it isn't like a sweatshirt material um so it fits more like a blouse so you get that kind of puffy drapey look um, it is quite a drapey fabric so it's a nice one to work with I absolutely love this sweatshirt I can see myself making more of them this is actually the second one that I've made I'll show you another one that I've done in another video um, which is the long dress version so this is absolutely lovely one of my favourite makes of lockdown although believe it or not I haven't actually had a chance to wear it out yet um, but I think you will agree it is lots of fun and it's definitely the fabric that makes it. My second make is another Tilly in the Buttons. This is the Tabitha T, but it's the long sleeve version. This silver and grey leopard print was fabric that I bought on the Utrecht fabric market, just coupled with some plain black cotton jersey. So it's nothing special, it really is just a knock around t-shirt. Obviously if it was tucked in with a belt it would look a little bit smarter. Um, but just like all of Tilly's garments, it's super easy to make. You can throw this together literally in less than an hour. Um, I sewed it all on the overlocker and I just did the hemming on my sewing machine um, with the exception of the bottom band which I used my little faux hem technique. I'll link it up here, it's a great little tutorial and I'll show you how you can do it yourself. So nice, super simple, quick and easy make. Now I'm gonna throw this one on over the top. This was eventful. <laughs> I have this gorgeous Sherpa cuddle fleece in my shop in a grey and also a pink. It is adorable. It is so unbelievably soft, but the back of it is a little bit rough. So, what I thought I would do is make two tops and put them together. So this is the Tilly and the Buttons Nora top. And what I did is I made one Nora out of the Sherpa Cuddle Fleece and I made another Nora out of a really light weight jersey. It's like a ponte, but it's a fairly lightweight ponte. But I only cut the front, the back and the sleeves out of the Sherpa and then all of the other parts from the ponte. Let me pop it on and I will show you. It means that the Cuddle Fleece is the lining on this top which is so cosy. It reminds me of those, what did we used to call them? Puffer lumps. In the 80s, we all used to have these kind of big pink, pale pink, baby pink sweatshirts that were like clouds. They were really puffy. Um, and it does remind me of that. It obviously does absolutely nothing for one's figure, but it is really warm and snuggly. And throughout the winter months, this was so lovely to chuck on. I mean, it's really quite boring. I could have jazzed it up with some vinyl decals or something like that. But as you can see, I just made a full Nora with a Sherpa, a Sherpa Nora. I put the two wrong sides together and basted them around the neckline, around the cuffs, and around the bottom. And then once they were together as kind of one garment, then I added the neckband, the cuffs, and the waistband. And that just pulled the whole garment together and meant that there was no raw edges. As you can see, I did the whole thing on my overlocker. What I would say if you're using your overlocker and you're using this Sherpa Cuddle Fleece is to sew with a sewing machine first to get your seam allowances, then trim back your seam allowance with scissors and then overlock it. If you try and cut with your overlocker blade through this Sherpa, it will do it, but your poor overlocker is gonna hate you. It's gonna be so full of fluff and you're gonna have fluff absolutely everywhere. It'll be like there's been some mass sheep murder in your sewing room. So just be warned, it is a bit of a beast to work with. 
So regardless of whether you're making a Nora or any kind of sweatshirt, this is something that you could do. You just need to remember to make two of your garments and stitch them together before adding on any cuffs or neckbands or bands. So super cozy, really, really snugly warm. And again, this Sherpa fleece is still available in the shop. I'll pop the link down below. Next up is one of my I'm not sure about. <laughs> This is Simplicity 8513 and it's a bodysuit pattern with multiple options. I'll post the picture up here so you can see. Um, I went for the long sleeve version with the funnel neck um, and I'm not sure about it if I'm entirely honest. I think it's something that I can wear underneath a sweatshirt or a jacket, something to keep me warm. It's certainly a practical garment um, but I don't absolutely love it what I dislike most is the neck um, it isn't tight fitting and I think it should be um, it needs to be smaller and more like this obviously I could unpick it and remake it um, I haven't got around to doing that yet I only made this actually a few weeks ago during our sewing club weekender so I could redo that. Whether I can be bothered, I'm not too sure. I don't actually know if I'm even going to wear this garment. Again, I added cuffs to it. Um, these are pre-bought cuffs that I bought in Amsterdam. Um, and I'm pleased I did. I think it just makes it look a bit smarter. With regards to the pattern itself, it's really ropey, if I'm honest. Um, I haven't chosen to use the leg elastic that they recommend. I've used fold over elastic on the leg holes instead. Um, and I have used the sew on popper tape. Um, but the finishing of it is messy and there is no neat way of finishing it off. Um, so it's just one of those garments that it's perfectly practical um but you've just got that kind of rough raw edgeness about it and um, that's just a little bit beginnery and a little bit basic and just looks a bit crap not that it matters because no one's going to be looking down here are they but it bothers me um, and i don't like it when sewing patterns are created with a quick win that isn't nice to look at um, i like all my edges to be nice and neat and everything finished properly so yeah it's not something I'm going to be making again. I've made two of these. I've got another one that I'm going to show you in a minute, which is a different version. And that is absolutely awful. But I will show it to you because I would be wrong of me not to show you my fails as well as my wins. So there we go. Oh, the other thing is this is supposed to have a zip in the back. Um, that would have taken me absolutely ages. I knew that I didn't need it. This is stretchy enough fabric that it was just going to go over my head. So I didn't worry about putting the zip in the back and that would have made this even looser if I'm honest. So I think that's, if you had done it tightly, it would need a zip in it obviously to make sure that you could get it over your head. Although there's still quite a bit of stretch in there, even if I'd done it tighter. But there we go. This is going to go to the bottom of the cupboard. If I wear it this year, I wear it this year. I don't think I will. It will probably end up in the charity shop bag. Um, but it's just one of those things. Either that or I might just chop it and turn it into the top and add a skirt, turn it into a skater dress or something. I just, I don't love it. Let me show you the other one. Right, as you can see, this is a total disaster i think mainly because this fabric does absolutely nothing for my complexion um it is obviously supposed to be fairly booby i don't think it's too booby but i do actually find that what happens you've kind of got a bit of a a bow here and then it goes straight and it doesn't stay straight and that's because of my boobs i'm fully aware of that they are a bit on the large side but yeah, it just, again, I don't like it. It's just, it's fussy. The neckband doesn't sit right. It's just a bit baggy. I think it, it is because of these puppies, but yeah, it's just not me. I don't like it. I would far rather make a solid bodysuit with a low cut V rather than this faux wrap um, malarkey that's going on. The fabric I bought originally thinking it would be quite nice to wear with like a little jacket and a skirt going out of an evening um, but it's so pale that it just makes me look really pasty and really drawn out so I don't know what I'm going to do with this one but I do know I won't wear it. Um, I won't even wear it probably under anything. Maybe it's useful to keep if I ever go skiing again. <laughs> I could wear it as thermals um, but yeah 
it's not for me. So Elspeth has had great luck with this pattern. She's made a couple of really nice bodysuits, but she's just gone for the round neck version. Um, so never say never, I might make it again, but I don't think I'll be rushing to do it in a hurry, especially when you can buy a basic bodysuit from the likes of Primark for about 3 dollars um, There's certain things that I just don't think are worth making. So not a complete fail but also nothing special. So while I've got my disastrous top on, I might as well show you this one. Um, it's not what I've been sewing technically, but it is what I've been making. This is the Popcorn Heart Cardigan by Iron Lamb, and it is a crochet cardigan. And as you can see, it's got all of these hearts on the sleeve made with popcorn stitches, hence why it's called the Popcorn Heart. Um, this was a crochet along that I did in one of my groups, so lots of us have made these. Um, if you're not a member of my free group, then do jump down below. The link is down there. We have lots of good fun activities running all the time. So lots of us have made this. Be warned, it comes up massive, as you can see. I took my measurements, I did my tension square. This is the large and it is huge. I like it because it's oversized, it's cosy, I can chuck it on, but I do have to roll the sleeves up. Look, if I don't, <laughs> <laughs> that's where they are <laughs> they are at least five inches if not six inches too long <laughs> um, but as the pattern starts right at the very beginning of the sleeves it is a tricky one to be able to shorten so do bear that in mind um, the yarn that I've used is a king Cole chunky um, let me just go and look it up because I know you're going to ask no need, I can remember. King Cole Timeless Chunky. It's available in all of these lovely pastel colours. This is a blushy pink. There's also a blue, a cream, I think there's a grey version, and quite a few other kind of vintagey colours. So they're really nice. Actually, on reflection, this top with this doesn't look quite so bad with jeans. The neckline's still really dodgy, but colour wise, obviously the pink brings out a better complexion. This is actually quite a nice outfit. Uh, maybe I should use the rest of this fabric to make a round necked one um, that I can wear with jeans and this cardigan. What do you reckon? It's not designed to do up or come across the body. It is just a round the, the side of you, more of like a jacket. Some of my ladies have put a big like toggle button or a brooch on here just to hold it together, which is another option. But I do like this. It's lovely. I chuck this on of an evening, keep myself nice and cosy. The next thing I have to show you is full on loungewear. I absolutely love this outfit. I've had so much wear out of it. It is a mashup of two different patterns. It is the Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha top that has got cuffs and a waistband. Obviously I've embellished it myself with some iron on vinyl in leopard print. My kids both call me mama, so that's uh, been done sadly it's actually coming off a little bit it's been really really well washed and it's starting to peel off just a little bit um so i think i might have to redo that the trousers are simplicity no they're not the trousers are new look 6381 i've made them lots of times before so i'll just lift my top up so you can see them um, they are the big wide leg jersey palazzo pants with the black wide elasticated waist you'll probably remember i've made these a couple of times last summer with matching little ruffle sleeve vest tops um, and they look like jumpsuits if you wear the vest top tucked in with the trousers over the top because they're high-waisted so again they are secret pajamas i'll put a link if i can find it to the instructional video for the ruffle sleeve top and then you'll be able to see the full outfit but I absolutely love this these trousers are the most comfy trousers ever they are so easy to make I absolutely love them again you can make them in under an hour no problem um, the fabric is a crushed stretch velvet um, and I bought this from fabric 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 rehab um, <laughs> at the Stitches show, which would have been February 2020, just before we went into lockdown. So it was the one that they did um, in their new venue. My brain's completely gone. I'm not used to doing all this video in anymore. Um, 
the Business Design Centre in Islington. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, that was the very last show that I went to and I bought that there. This was one of the first things that I made in lockdown and I did get lots of wear out of it this year. There's some photos, in fact, if I can find them, I'll put them up here. There's some photos that were taken when the lovely Charlotte came to teach for us. Um, she came to do the Cottesloe swimsuit class with us, which was one of the very last classes that we taught before we went into our first lockdown. And I was wearing it that day. Um, and I've also had a photo shoot subsequently by the lovely Chloe Lee Photography wearing this outfit, or just certainly this jumper. I don't know if I had the trousers on as well. Um, I'll try and find those photos too. They were taken with my little girl, little Miss Mac, um, and we had lots of fun taking them. So yes, this is an absolute staple. If you want a really comfy lounge suit, something you can bum around in, but super comfy, I would highly recommend a stretch velvet. Um, and make yourself a tab at the top and 6381 trousers but just be warned when you first make it you are going to be electrocuting everybody that you touch um, you need to get the static well and truly out of the garment <laughs> So I was spraying copious amounts of hairspray on the inside of my outfits before wearing them for quite some time but touch wood the electricity seems to have left the building <laughs> So that is all my lounge wear for part one of my what I've been sewing in the last 12 months videos. So I'm gonna go on and record some more. Um, I'm gonna do a dresses, a tilly in the buttons and a summer. Get those filmed, I'm gonna try and get them all done today if I can, edited and then I'll upload them gradually over the next few weeks. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been getting up to loungewear wise. It's been good to be back. Sorry if I fluffed and blundered and goodness knows what it, um, or waffled endlessly and aimlessly because I'm a little bit out of practice, but there we go. You may or may not have noticed that I hit 10,000 subscribers just after Christmas, which was awesome. Um, as I film this, I'm really close to 10,500, um, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. If you don't subscribe, please do hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you click the little bell as well so that you're notified whenever I upload videos. I'm gonna do my best to try and upload lots more over the next few weeks. And if I get this edited and uploaded when I plan to, I'm doing a sew along tomorrow. If it doesn't go up tonight, I've done a sew along already. Have a little look. <laughs> slave glands and all that. Right, I'm gonna go, I'm waffling, I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching, bye!